welcome back everyone. So I'm going to be putting in more furniture this week. So we've got the settee going in here, little L shape. And I want to weld in the kitchen bench across there. But on top of that, we also want to start finishing off this area. So we had to work out a few weeks back the height of this little um, single bed here and what would work for this double. So we're gonna finish welding all this. We've got a little bit more to put in there and put some side bracings to go in this way. Um, Cause obviously you can't just sleep on that one bar. And they'll finish this whole room. This is, there's not much to do in this room. It's just finish off these beds and, and that door frame and that's all done. So we'll try and get that all done and see how we go with all this building up in this room. So that's a lot to do. We'll try and get it done. So just trying to work out that perfect height for your settee and you know backrest and even the kitchen bench width and length and height. So I basically brought in my outdoor chair here. It's, I find this a really comfy chair. And I had to stack some wood up uh, to get the height a little bit higher because your legs don't feel quite right. That's a little bit low for me. The other thing I did is uh, worked out where my armrest will go. Uh, basically that height, I want to be able to sprawl my arms out and rest them comfortably. So I want a bit of a gap here. Um, you can put a drink up there if you want. Probably make that a little bit wider. So we can might be able to put a ledge on there with a fiddle. You might be able to pop something on there. You can have a table in front of you anyway. So that's probably good. Now the challenging part will be, this is where you like your bum height's going to be however there's going to be a cushion and as you sit on that cushion it needs to depress to about that size so i've got to take that into account so this isn't going to be the the bottom of the settee the bottom of the settee will have to come down you know work out sort of the density of foam that we're going to put on there and you know the foam is probably going to be that fit thick and needs to depress to about there so lots of things to consider uh, but yeah, I'll figure it out and we'll get to welding some steel in.
basically finished this bed. I had to put some more supports going across there, otherwise it'd be too flimsy. One going across there, otherwise that'll tilt over there. That plank of wood will just tilt off to the side. And I put another one in there because we don't want that side to tilt down when you're laying across here. Uh, so that's basically done. This side, I've got one beam going across there. So, you know, that beam's too, too long across that whole span. Needed to stop it from tilting that way and this way. I do need another one in between here, but uh, I've got to work out where that storage is going. And I've still got more steel to cut up for the settees around the corner there. Um, because it's such a small piece, I'm gonna, once I've finished that, I'm gonna see what leftover bits I'm gonna have. And one of them might fit in there, it saves me cutting up my nice long lengths. I have now popped this piece of steel in here. This is the door frame. So G clamped it in there, made sure it's parallel so that this uh, door frame border is going to be all nice kitted out. I'm just going to reframe at the moment from putting an, another piece down the bottom here um, for the tow rail just because I don't know whereabouts this height is. I might want to lower that height down a little bit so that's less of a, a tripping hazard going through. Um, so I'll just do a bit more thinking about this bottom piece. but. I'm going to finish welding in this door frame here.
All right, so interesting thing happened. Uh, we had a lot of GoPro issues. Uh, our GoPro sort of um, stopped working very well. Um, it, we lost a lot of footage. All the files got corrupt, corrupted on it. So I had a lot of uh, talking parts of this video and um, I had to do an ending. She's all gone. Um, so I'm here in my home workshop uh, finishing off the video now. So. I pulled the GoPro apart. I found what the issue is, is that this battery is basically not connecting properly. So halfway through filming it, well, you, you press the button and, um, you know, it just, it just turns off. It says, uh, uh file corrupted, repairing file, no big deal. Um, so what I've found is that the connectors on the battery, um, they're, they're not clean enough. Uh, you know, this thing is, put through some hard life. It's got uh, metal shavings uh, thrown at it. Um, yeah, it's, it's been put in some pretty harsh conditions. Uh, so yeah, it's just this. Um, I think the battery will still be fine. I think we just got to give it a bit of a clean up. Might as well just do that now while, while we're thinking about it and we're in the workshop. It's nice having everything handy. You can just grab it when you need it. So, this is just isoprosyl alcohol. It's 100%, um, you know, alcohol. It evaporates 100% and leaves no residue. So, any, it's good for electrical items to clean up all connectors and stuff. Just pl spray that into all the connectors. It's just air in a can. I have a compressor, but uh, it's noisy and this is handy to have. So just. Clean it all up. That'll clean all those connectors. That'll take any of the uh, bad contacting. Like electrical connections get some vertigous build up on them. So this is just gonna clean that up. And that's gonna stop me having issues with my GoPro. Do a little bit in here as well. You don't wanna to spray too much in, in to a GoPro. But just on the battery terminals. And then um, you just make it evaporate nice and quickly with the air. And that should clean our GoPro issue up and um, stop me getting that corrupted file problem again. So I'll, I'll uh, yeah, try and edit the footage as best we can, all the footage that is remaining. Uh, what we got up to basically was we got the kitchen bench done uh, we got all the bed framing in the kids' bedroom um, in the forward cabin. We got all that done. Um, I got that piece for the door um, welded in. We're just going to do the tow rail area. Um, the only thing I didn't get completed was the settees. Um, halfway through building them, we come up with a better option. Um, so we were going to make basically the bench seats and then with a back support, and then there was going to be a little bit of wasted space behind the back support. What we decided now is we're going to just have the back support as a separate item and that we can pivot it back. It's going to swing back, opening up the settee bench, which was about 500 wide. It's going to uh, give us about another 300 mil, uh, given it, so that makes it about you know, 700, 800 or 900 wide, um, depending on how much foam cushioning is on it. Um, so that we can we can pivot that back support back out of the way, and that could be a um, underway bed. It's um, 2.2 meters long, which is great for a bed. Um, and then we're pivoting that is going to be yeah, nearly 800, 900 wide. Um, and then you could put a, a bit of a crib uh, little uh, thing to stop you from like rolling out of your bed. Um, and yeah, that's going to be mid boat nice wide uh, single berth bed for while while uh, sailing underway. So that, that's a good option. Uh, we gained a little bit more usable space. Um, sometimes while we're building, it's just good. You, you come up with these ideas, but you just gotta stop and um, yeah, redesign and progress through. So with that being said, um, I did buy some new equipment today. So might as well show you that. Um, so I'm still on a quest to get better footage. So with that better footage, I'm going to try and the only way to me to improve it is to get better lighting. So I saw these down at the shop. 
These get about six hours of run time and uh, you can change directions. They've got four large magnets on the bottom. I can charge other items because you can use them as a battery pack or you can hang them up. So the problem I've got is basically um, I've got two little uh, portable lights um, so I can see what I'm doing but generally like they're not magnetic you can't just place them anywhere around um, and you know they're, they're just in the way a lot. So I figured these ones might uh, be able to be positioned not nice as spotlights and if I can get better lighting, I'm gonna get better video footage. And as you can see, these are pretty bright lights. Um, there you go. So they're, they're pretty good. So, yeah, the other thing I bought, oh, is this, it's a little heavier. So this is our hot water system. Um, it's a nice unit. So, Standard on boats, you have a much smaller hot water system, but they generally run through the engine to heat the, the water. They do have a 12 volt backup as well. So when you're you know, at anchor, you're not having to run your, your motor to, um, to, to get hot water or at the marina. Um, but generally speaking, they are pretty expensive hot water systems. They're about 1600 bucks. I've seen some new for 800 bucks. However, these are about four hundred dollars, um, and these are good for a small home. These are good for about three three showers all in a row. Um, then you've got to wait for the water to heat up. Uh, but how often are people going to have three showers all in a row? And then you got to wait an hour, hour and a half for it to heat up again. Then you can have some more showers. Um, but yeah, fifty liters of hot water. Um, and it's got mains water pressure, it's got pressure relief valve, it's basically a storage system. Um, and it's a good way uh, for a non-diesel engine uh, boat to heat water and store hot water. Um, so we'll open it up and see what it looks like. All right, it's very white, as you can see. So basically it has 240 volts. The boat we're building is gonna have 240 volt ability. Um, this runs at 2.4 kilowatts, so Basically, you can get higher ones um, that run at 3.4, um, and but the more load you put on your batteries and your inverters and also your generator, um, you know, the, the worse you're going to be. So it's going to take a little bit longer to heat up than some of the other hot water systems out there, but that's okay because if I if I need to be able to run the generator and have all these uh, equipments turned on at the same time, I need the uh, the draw from that generator to be as low as possible. So that's what I went here. Um, cold water goes in here, and then hot water comes out there. There'll be a pressure relief valve, so if this builds up um, too much heat, um, uh, all the water wants to expand, like the gases, um, it's a pressure vessel. So if the pressure inside here expands too much because it gets too hot, it needs to have the ability to have a pressure relief valve come off of that. Um, so that'll be on this side. Um, and yeah, a, as you release hot water out this way, cold water goes in. The cold water pushes the hot water up the top, pushing it out the outlet. Good little units. You generally see these on most homes or well, here in Australia. You see them in, all, in most homes in Australia. That we have gas ones here or electric. I'm hoping to keep as much gas out of the boat as I can, so that's why I went an electric hot water system. Um, we have enough room to have a bigger one. I just didn't feel we have the need for a bigger one. Uh, 50 liters of hot water is, is plenty. 
Um, so, yeah, I'll uh, have to make up some brackets to install this soon. Uh, so that's one of my next jobs coming up. Well, we've got the hot water system, we've got some new lights. I've cleaned up the GoPro, so hopefully uh, that fixes a lot of issues. We've got some more work to go on with. Uh, next fortnight, I want to finish the settees. Um, we're gonna try and get those the swinging uh, back backrests done and finish off, yeah, just the seating. So yeah, that's still a little bit of work to do there. Um, and then if I've got time, I'm gonna maybe start making up some brackets for the hot water system. Uh, so yeah, we're at the stage now where we're gonna start looking at installing bits and pieces or the mechanical items, anything that needs a pretty hefty bracket um, so that we can, we, we need to fabricate brackets and stuff. Uh, so there's other areas I need to start looking at. The sail locker, I want to have a sturdy bench with a bench vise. So there'll have to be some brackets put in there for the bench vise. I need to install a plate for the, um, the anchor winch on the deck. Um, how, however, it's just, we've just been having a rain nonstop in the last three or four weeks. It's just nonstop rain. So I haven't been able to do any work outside of the boat. So hopefully we can get that done. Um, other than that inside, um, it's the only major bracket we've got would be this one and the generator bracket. There's gonna be a uh, anywhere between a five to seven kilowatt um, generator inboard. So uh, that will need a hefty bracket as well. So we'll have to get onto them soon. Um, and once that settee's done, I think that's basically most of the welding. We'll have to have a bit of a walkthrough soon and make sure all the welding's done before we start moving on to stuff like installing things like this and installing the bilge pump and installing all the auxiliary items um, before blasting. So yeah, sorry about losing the footage. Um, we'll try our best to put an episode together with what we have. Um, hopefully it turns out all right, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen what we've got yet, um, not until I finish recording and the wife puts it all together. Um, so hopefully I haven't bored you all um, and hopefully we see everyone next week. So let us know what you think, leave a like and a comment and see everyone again. Thanks guys.